wind's a little vicious, but it is nice out there. Yesterday was nice too. I'm wearing it still. <laughs> it was hot out there. I think me and Cassie, we woke up about 5.30 and we didn't sit down until last night when we got home finally. We was on the go. It was a busy day, but it was a good day. Um, today I'm going to be in, a, I'll mostly be in John chapter 1, but uh, before we get there, let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I love you and I just, I thank you for your word and for this day and I just thank you for this country we live in, Father, and I just pray this morning, Lord, as a, as we dig into your word, Lord God, that you help me along, that you bless your word, and, uh, that you just open all of our hearts and our ears and our minds and just open them up to just understand your word, Lord God, and we love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. So this uh, week I was going to preach a, like Sunday before Easter message. But I had something that was on my heart and my and uh, God kind of confirmed me to preach on it just kind of through my wife. But, uh, you know, last, when was it, last Sunday, Linda shared her testimony over there, and Eudora. And, uh, and I just got to thinking when she shared her testimony, just uh, I got to thinking about it, how so many people, how so many Christians, they don't share their testimony. People don't. And they get, they're like scared to or they don't know how to or they don't. They don't understand that, look, as Christians, we all got a testimony. Every single one of us got a testimony of Jesus Christ. And uh, and and that's something that we all we all need to understand that. And uh, and over in John, he tells us that. Over in 1 John, this is the first scriptures I'm going to read. 1 John chapter 5, 9 through 12, it says this. It says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He who believes in the Son of God has this witness in himself. He who does not believe in God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. And right there, John's telling us, he's saying, look, you have a testimony. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you trust him as your Lord and Savior, you have a testimony. You know, so often we go to these, uh, um, like the 490 ministry, or if you went to, uh, say, a freeway ministry, you some drug addict or somebody who used to be a drug addict will get up or that's had a bad life, and they'll share these testimonies. And some people sit out there, and I think that there's some of y'all in this church, you never was a drug addict. You never did. You never was out gallivanting and acting crazy. And some people, those people, a lot of times they'll sit back and think, well, I just don't got a testimony like them. Look. Our testimonies might be different than what we've been through in life, but they all basically are the same. Jesus Christ saved my life from sin. That's the gist of it right there, right? And that's where all of our life should point, right? Anybody should be able to stand up and testify the fact Jesus saved me from my sin. It's not, you know, your testimony isn't a... They're, they're not just built on bad people's lives, right? I guess you could say it's not just a... You know, somebody who's been... Good, I guess you say to a world standard, they uh, they have a testimony just like all of us in Christ, and uh, and a lot, and you know, First Peter tells us he says, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, but with gentleness and respect. And right there, Peter, he's saying, he's saying, look, sanctify, set apart Christ in your heart, and always be ready to give an account for what you believe. Some people will take that and be like, well, I don't got the gospel scriptures that I can just turn to and just throw them at you real quick. You know, I can, I'm not a like machine gun Christian that can just spit verses at you real quick. And you know, some of us don't. We don't memorize scriptures. Like, I know some people, they can just start spitting out verses and they memorize stuff real good. Some people got a mind like that. I'll tell you, I forget everything. If it wasn't for my wife, I wouldn't remember a lot of stuff. <laughs> she helped me. I got to write stuff down and that's why I have a lots of notes because I will. I'll get sidetracked and I, my mind, I just don't, I don't know. I don't remember stuff like some people can. Uh, but but the, where I was getting with that is, you know, even if you can't just throw scriptures out there real fast, if you can't walk people through the Romans road, I think I actually got some bills. I talked about that before, witnessing and, you know, going through the Romans road, the different scriptures in Romans, learning them and, being able to use those. But even if you don't know them and you're just a new Christian, tell them your story. 
Tell people how God saved you. That's testifying for Christ. Because guess where that's going to end up? It's going to end up with you telling them the gospel of Jesus Christ. How I was a sinner. God convicted my heart. He pulled me to him. I put my faith and trust in him. And he saved me from my sin. That's, the, that's anybody's life. Whether, like I said, you were good or a drug addict. And that's why the power of testimony. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Being a walking, talking testimony of Jesus. And we're going to look at the story of John the Baptist. Because there's four questions in there that I think we can pull out of there. That will help us and help you be confident in sharing your testimony with people. Because it's something we need to do. You know, like I said, you might not be able to spit them verses out. But you have a story. You have a testimony within yourself of the living Jesus Christ. They testify for, to people. Share your story with people. People need to hear it. People will be saved through it. They'll be blessed through it. I love hearing testimonies. I love hearing them. So uh, I'm going to turn over to John chapter 1. And we'll get started. John 1, starting in verse 19. First question he asks, it's going to be, who are you? Who are you? This is a question you need to ask yourself. Who are you? Listen to this. Uh, John 1, uh, verse 19, starting there, it says, Now this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not, and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then are you, Elijah? pretty much what they could say who then are you are you elijah and he says he said i am not are you the prophet and he answered no then they said to him who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us what do you say about yourself he said i am the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the lord as the prophet isaiah said so right off the bat we see the first question you need to ask yourself is who are you this is something we all need to know who are we you know, that question can go a long ways. And you see, John answers it humbly, and he sends them. He, he, he points his talk back to Isaiah, where, where they prophesied about who he would be, right? That he would be the one that would go before Christ to prepare the way for him. And uh, when I think about John, this is something our life should reflect, what, what John did, right? He, he went about confessing and letting people know that Christ is coming, He's coming. Get yourselves ready. He's coming. And he, and, uh, and he did baptize people, but he was just preparing them for what was to come, what was greater to come. It's the same thing we do as Christians. When we're saved, we got this testimony within ourselves. And God's saying, look, you need to go out and share with people and let them know, look, I'm coming back. And when I come back, I'm coming back for judgment. It's not going to be a good thing either for people. And that's why, that's, that's why there's that urgency for the gospel call for people to tell people about Christ. Because folks need Jesus. People need Jesus Christ. You ever seen them church? Y'all need Jesus? That's true. Folks need Jesus Christ. People are dying and going to hell and they need it. They need to understand, look, you need Jesus Christ. And it's not just, he's not just going to save you from addiction or from all this other things. He's going to save you from your sins. That way you can go to be in heaven and live eternally, give you eternal life like he said over there in 1 John. And that's why we need to be testing. But you got to ask yourself, who are you? And we can answer that question a million ways, right? I'm a dad. I'm a father. I'm a mother. I'm a, I hang sheetrock. You know, I'm a sheetrock guy. I'm a pipe fitter. I'm a welder. I'm a this. I'm a that, right? But, but who are you in Christ is something you got to ask yourself. I preached a sermon on that here a couple, two or three weeks ago about who we are in Jesus Christ. And just to recap some of that, because in Christ takes on a whole new dimension because i'm justified romans 5 1 i'm a child of god romans 8 16 i'm forgiven colossians 1 13 and 14 i'm sanctified first corinthians 6 17 a new creation second corinthians 5 17 more than a conqueror in christ romans 8 37 i'm saved by grace through faith ephesians 2 8 a laborer together with god first corinthians 3 9 an inheritor of eternal life first john 5 11 and 12 I get all my needs met by Jesus Christ. Philippians 4.19 I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind through Jesus Christ. Romans 12.1 and 2 Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 1 Peter 1.18 and 19 And you can just go on and on and on all day long of who you are in Christ. And you have to understand, you've got to take hold of this stuff so you have confidence and you know this is who I am. You know, before Christ I was a lot of things. I was a piece of trash. I, you can ask my wife. She'll even testify. My husband sucked. Before Christ, I was a garbage. I was. I was a junkie piece of junk. A narcissistic, selfish person. But guess what? 
there's still some people who probably think I'm like that, but I can confidently stand up and tell you today, I'm forgiven, I'm sanctified, I'm a new creation, I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ, and so are you if you know Christ. Don't let people sit there and tell you, oh, you're still a drug addict, you're still a piece of junk. Look, there's people who think that about you. If you live the wild life, folks, probably they're gonna, there's going to be naysayers, gossipers, and people who think that of you. But you've got to stand firm and stand on Jesus and believe these things about yourself. That's where true transformation starts, is believing, understanding, standing firm on what God says about you, not what people say about you. You let Jesus Christ define who you are. Don't let the world tell you who, who you are or who you are to be. Let Jesus Christ define that for you. And you stand on that. Don't be afraid. Remember, always ask your question. Always ask yourself that question, who am I? Who am I? And remember, always put who am I in Christ because that's what matters. And it, that's what will always matter and that's what will stand for eternity. The next question we see asked is why do you do what you do? So who are you and then why do you do what you do? Starting there in 24, he says, Now those who were sent were from the Pharisees, and they asked him, saying, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he who coming after me is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. And uh, Matthew 3 records a little more than this. Matthew 3, verse 11, 12 says, as for me, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor, and he will gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chafe with unquenchable fire. So you see these Pharisees come to him, and they're like, John, why are you baptizing? Why are you doing what you do? And this is something we need to ask ourselves. Why do we do the things we do? Why do we do them? You know, John, why do you baptize? Because Messiah, the Christ, is coming. That's why. I'm out baptizing. I'm preparing the way for Jesus to come. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. He says, because I'm doing my best to serve the Lord, right? That's what he was called to do. He was called to do this. So he's like, this is what I'm called to do. That's why I'm out here. I just told you back there, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. That's what I'm out here doing. And we got to ask ourselves this. Why do we do the things we do? Why do we come to church? Why do we serve Christ? Why do we live the way we live? These are questions people ask. Just like John, people ask these questions. Why do you homeschool your kids? Why do you do this? Why do you do that, Randy? Why don't you cuss? Huh? Why, why are you, how, how are you patient with people? How do you do that stuff? It's because I'm trying to live like Christ. That's why. I want, I want, to, be, I want to please him. I want to do what he wants me to do. I'm, I, honestly, I'm not a patient person. I'm really not. I'm not that patient of a person, but sometimes I just, I hear people say, fake it till you make it. And sometimes that's what I kind of got to do. Just be like, all right, I got to act patient. And I just, you know, but sometimes as a Christian, that's what you got to do. You just got to do it. You know, sometimes that feeling ain't there to where I just feel patient. I just got to do it. It's kind of like loving people. You just got to love them. I mean, that's not a feeling. It's a choice I make. And that's what real love is, especially scriptural real love. It's not, I don't always feel that. It's hard to love some people. Some people are so difficult to love. But you just got to make yourself do it. You just got to be like, okay. It's kind of like that. those verses where it says, turn the other cheek. That, that's a hard one to swallow. You know, they say he slaps you on one, give him the other. Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> that's a hard one right there. You know, and, but, but why do we do what we do? And it's because of Jesus Christ. It's because that's what he's called us to do. You know, Ephesians tells us there's works that he pre prepared for us beforehand that we may walk in them. And that's what we do. We serve God. And some of you might say, well, I ain't like John. I ain't out baptizing people and all this stuff. And you might not be about baptizing folks. But guess what? There's a lot of stuff you can do for the Lord. Right? You can just loving people, being good to people, being kind to people. Stuff like that's going to make you... Make people ask questions. When you're good to people, they're going to ask questions. Why are you so good? Why are you so nice? Why do you do the stuff you do? You know, why, why, you give, you, why do you give all this stuff away? Why are you just good? You're always helping people and doing this stuff. Why do you do it? Be like, because Jesus saved me. That's why. He gave me his life. I just want to, I just want to be a blessing. I mean, and, and that, that's why I call it a walk and talking Christian. Because I'm telling you, your walk. The way you live your life will testify so much greater than the 
words you speak. And the way you live your life is where people are going to ask you questions to be able to speak. That's what calls it. You see that with John. He was just doing what God called him to do. And these people are coming up saying, why are you doing this? Who are you? Why, why are you doing this stuff? And that's what made him question was the, was the faithful life that he lived to Jesus Christ. And when you're faithful to God, I'm telling you, folks will be asking questions. They will. And then there's your time to testify right there. This is why, this is who I am. This is why I do what I do. And the next thing you got to understand is who is Jesus Christ? We got to understand that. You know, who is Christ? Who is he? And John answers that question over in, uh, starting in 28. He says, these things were done in uh, Bethabara beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. It says, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he whom I said after me comes. A man who is preferred before me, for he was for he was before me. I love how John says that. You know, John was six months older than Jesus, and he's out telling these people, "Look, the Messiah's coming." But look what he says here. He knew who Christ was. This month, look, he says, um, he says, after after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. You see that? He's echoing what John says in John 1, 1 where he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. See, he knew who Christ was. He he knew, knew who he was. And uh, and that's something we got to do. We got to know who Jesus Christ was. Like verse 29 says, He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's our Savior. He's the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. Like John three sixteen says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. And no one loves like Jesus, right? There's no greater love in the world than the love of Christ. And, uh, and I always think of how much Jesus loves people. And I know there's a lot of preachers out there. They overemphasize the love of God. But... Uh, I think we were talking about it this morning. Uh, we did this morning in Bible study just about some of the people that, how, how you can't judge a person's heart. You can't. None of us can judge people's heart. And and I was talking about how, you know, there's going to be some people in heaven who, who folks just think, there ain't no way he's making it. There ain't no way she's making it. And you're going to get to heaven one day, and you're going to see these people, and you're going to be like, oh, my goodness, I did not even think they were saved. And you know that's, but that's the love of God. The people that he he died for all mankind. He died for the the Hitlers, the Osama bin Ladens. Folks, we wouldn't die for. Him. I know I wouldn't. I ain't gonna lay my life. I mean, tell me you would. There ain't a person in here who would jump in the front of a bullet for Hitler. Most of us would be holding a gun. Just being honest. But those these, Christ died for these people. That's crazy love right there. That's. That's the love of God. That's this Jesus Christ we're talking about. And uh, and that's 1 Timothy 2, 5, and 6. Says, well, there is one God and one mediator also between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. And that's Jesus given for us all, a ransom for us all. And you got to praise God for that today, that he gave himself for you and me and for all of us. We got to understand and just know who Christ is. Know that He is the He is a full sacrifice for our sins, and we need Him. The whole world needs Him, and they need to hear you telling them about it. If you know Him, let them know. I'm telling you, don't don't ever be afraid to testify for Christ. People are timid timid about it, you know, sharing their testimony. But just share your life, what you what led you to Christ. That's all you got to do. It's not hard. You're just telling a story. You know, we get nervous, and uh. But you don't have to be nervous. You're just telling them your story. You ain't got to know all the verses and all that stuff. Just, just give them your testimony. And the last thing is, how did you get to where you are? And we see a glimpse of, glimpse of this in John's answer there in uh, 31 through 34. It says, I did not know him, but, he, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he sent me to baptize with water and said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. 
Can you see that? John, how'd you get to where you are? He sent me. God sent me here, you know? And he's saying, he's, God did this. God sent me here. And, and, uh, and I think of just myself, you know, how did I get to where I am? And it's because of Jesus Christ is how I got here. And I'm so thankful for Jesus Christ saving me. And, uh, and I think one thing we always need to remember is where we've came from and where we are. You know, how, how did I get here to this pulpit from being an old wretch, bad husband, bad person even before that, and God just saved my life. And it's been a one thing after another. He's just, just guided me to where I'm at. It's Sometimes it's kind of unexplainable, but, you know, that's just part of my testimony is how God took me from nothing and he's, he made me into something. I'm still a nothing, but I'm a something in Jesus Christ, and I know that. And um, and like I say, saying, you need to answer these four questions, and just so that you can be, uh, that they can just help you be confident and remind yourself, you know, just of who you are in Jesus Christ. Why do you do what you do? Who is Christ, and how did you get to where you are? And when I was thinking about this, I thought, you know, a lot of big companies, how do they sell their products? Personal testimony. That's how you sell it. You get people who've used the product, had success with it, and you let them share their testimony. It's the same thing we do for Jesus Christ. If you know him and he's in your heart and you know what he does, you, you know you're saved, you've seen him save, your, save you, right? Come and send the Holy Spirit to your heart. Just testify of it. I mean, that's, I know this sounds different, but you're kind of a salesman for the Lord. That's what his people are. We're, we're to be walking, talking testimonies in the life we live. And, you know, when people hear, oh, I heard Cassie got that shampoo. Go ask her about it. She's like, yeah, girl, it's so good. It gets all the dandruff out. I ain't got no life no more. <laughs> I'm just playing. But, uh, but, you know, whenever you use this stuff, and uh, but whenever you use a product or something and you know it, you can testify about it. And it's the same with Christ when you when you – Know him and he's in your heart. He wants us to be a testimony of who he is. Be a good uh, good representation of him. To be a walking, talking testimony. And, and just um, and don't forget, when you believe in God's testimony of son, he gives you a testimony and he wants us to share it. And he does. But let's pray. Dear Lord, I love you and I thank you for your word. And I just pray, Lord, that we be faithful to testify of uh, to just testify of you, to be a walking, talking testimony just to the people around us, to the world around us. I pray you give us opportunities to share our testimony and uh, just to be a good witness for you, Lord God. And I just pray that you protect our hearts and our minds and just watch over us, Lord. And I just love you and pray you and praise you and pray that you bless all those who came in today and I pray that you bless them as they go, Lord God, and watch over them and their week. And I love you and praise you in the name of Jesus.